So here you can see an extended view Pyflow conveyor unit. Starting from the top, you have the cover. And attached to the cover is our vacuum source, which can consist of Pyab's patented multi-stage air-driven pump, mechanical blower, or a vein pump option. Below the cover, you'll see our air shock plate. These air shocks will back pulse the filters after each cycle. In every pie app, there will be one, three, or seven air shock tanks in order to back pulse the filter elements. The filter to air shock ratio of every pie app conveyor unit is one to one. Below our air shock plate, you can see our filter plate. Our filter plate can consist of one, three, or seven filter elements, depending on the size of the unit. We have filters that can range from 5 microns all the way down to 0 0.5 microns, depending on the product that is going through the conveyor unit. Below the filter plate is our unibody. Our unibodies range in different sizes, widths, and heights and also include a tangential style inlet. Below our unibody, we have our discharge modules. These discharge modules can be conical, full open, or fluidized, depending on the system and the product needed to convey. The pie flow vacuum conveyor family is used with great advantages in moving powders and granules. These conveyors have been developed as an answer to the severe requirements of operational safety and hygiene in the food, pharmaceutical, and chemical industries. All units are available with either a coax ejector driven vacuum pump or with a mechanical pump. Here we have some different units from the pie flow family starting from the left and working our way right. First up is the PyFlow P64 from the PyFlow P family. It is constructed using ASTM stainless steel 316 polished finish and has a two liter batch volume. It is compact in size and used for low rate conveyance systems of up to 0.25 tons per hour. It is used in the pharma and high food applications. Next up is the PyFlow FC or food contact conveyor. It is constructed using stainless steel 304 electro polish finish. It is available in a 3 liter, 7 liter, 14 liter, and 33 liter product volume. It can convey up to 8 tons per hour maximum capacity and is available for chemical, low food, and high food applications. Next up is the PyFlow I or PyFlow F. It is constructed using stainless steel 304 brushed finish. It is available with product volumes of 6 liter, 8 liter, 14 liter, and 28 liter. It is typically used for conveying 7.5 tons per hour maximum capacity. It is used in the industrial, chemical, or low food application segments. Next up is the PyFlow T. This conveyor is constructed with stainless steel 316 polished finish. It has a 10 liter product volume um, and is used for conveying 2 to 3 million parts per hour maximum capacity and is used in the pharmaceutical industry. Finally, we have the PyFlow P and or PyFlow P Smart, which is constructed using a stainless steel 316 polished finish. The PyFlow P has a 2 liter, 3 liter, 7 liter, 14 liter, 33 liter, and 56 liter product volume. Um, the PyFlow P Smart has a 5 liter, 7 liter, 22 liter, and 33 liter product volume. The PyFlow P is used for convey rates up to 10 tons per hour, while the PyFlow P Smart is used for convey rates up to 8 tons per hour maximum capacity. They're used in the chemical, low food, high food, and pharmaceutical industries. Here we're going to show you the PIAB PyFlow FC vacuum conveyor moving cornmeal from a mini feed station. You will see the standard batching sequence of the PIAB as it conveys the product from the hopper through the transfer line and then up into the PIAB conveyor. 
to the left and right of the PyFlow FC conveyor, you will see examples of different feed points available from PyAB. The feed nozzles and suction pipes on the right are used when product originates from boxes, bags, sacks, or totes. On the left, you will see our feed adapters, which are typically used when product is being conveyed from hoppers, bag dump stations, or other bulk type bins. The clear collection pot below the PIAB has a high level sensor to stop the PIAB when the product level has reached a high point. This prevents the conveyor from overfilling the receiver vessel and saves on air consumption since we are only moving product when the vessel below the conveyor has a need for material. The sequencing of the PIAB is managed by one of PIAB's control boxes, which you can see mounted to the left of the conveyor. On the right is the valve box, which communicates with the PIAB control and starts and stops the PIAB based on a high level. Our control units can be completely pneumatic or run by a PLC main operating system. We also have electrical control units, which have a host of special features. Now let's start the PIAB up and see how the product moves through the system. The normal process of the PIAB to enter its suction phase. When this happens, the bottom flap on the PIAB will close, our air shock will charge, and the pump will turn on product will start to move through the system as you can see here. During the discharge phase, the pump shuts off, the flap will open, and the air shock pulses to clean the filter like you can see here. The product is then dispensed into the receiving vessel below. This process continues until the operator or main control system signals the PIAB conveyor to stop, or when a high level is reached, like you can see in this example here. <laughs> 